Hey guys, this is Dennis here, and I'm joined by Joshua Vayers, all the way in South Africa. Yes, and sorry we haven't been around the last few weeks. We've got Thanksgiving, some other uh, stuff that came up that we had to work on. Also, we're kind of uh, going to kind of reorganize kind of what we do here. Uh, and yeah, so, but this is our usually weekly podcast. We got a lot of stuff to talk about. I mean, th- th- like, I was telling uh, Josh and this other people, I was like, it was like a month's or more worth of news that happened in like a week. Uh, just mm. crazy. Like big news, for example, like the Halo Infinite uh, delay to the fall 2021 is like ranked number third or fourth on this list of things that we need to talk about. Uh, you know, obviously we're going to talk the, about the Cyberpunk. Game Awards. Yeah, the Game Awards. We're going to talk about the Game Awards, The Last of Us. Part two winning a lot. People who like it, people don't. Uh, obviously, the main thing is the Cyberpunk 2077 news, which is the launch, the the hype, the graphical problems, the game problems, the bugs, the console versus PC version, the refunds, all that stuff. Um, yeah, all the new announcements also at the Game Awards, besides just the winners in, in terms of like Perfect Dark and all that stuff. So let's get let's start let's get started with a big one. Um, Cyberpunk 2077. You know, this game has been anticipated for a long, long time. Uh, it's been delayed several times. It finally came out <laughs> on December 10th. Um, and, you know, there's just been a lot of issues, uh, especially on the console side. I mean, there's still issues with the PC side, which we'll get into. But a lot of people were upset with the one, the performance on the console side. And then also the um, the yeah, frame rate, bugs, frame rate drops, frame, graphic, every, drop, yeah, all, bugs, all that stuff. Yeah, so the works. <laughs> so neither you or me got. Well, technically, I did get a review copy, but my review copy came after everyone else could purchase the game already. So I ended up just purchasing the PC version for two reasons. One, could it, so I could get a head start playing it. And two, I just, the version I was getting, the review copy version was a Xbox version. Um, I just heard there was a lot of problems with the console version. So I was like, screw it. I'll just play the PC version. I've a, I'd upgraded my video card for Half-Life Alex, you know, earlier this year. Anyways, I take advantage of that. Got it. Uh, you know, I've only played several hours, so I'm not like deep, deep into it. I haven't, you know, you know, uh, to be fair, I've only played several hours, so I haven't reached any huge game changing bug, like game ending bugs. I've gotten several graphical glitches, like, uh, uh, characters walking into elevate, like right through elevators, you know, like, Mm. uh, Jackie's, uh, he's like going with me to elevator and he just like walks through a closed elevator, you know, I've had Um, that with vehicles. He just walks right through my car. Every time he just walks right through it. (laughs) Uh, he was eating sushi, I think once. And it was like, there was no sushi, like being grabbed and he's just tossing whatever, you know, like that type of stuff. Like, Oh, he's holding a gun, but he's not really holding a gun. It's empty. Those type of graphical glitches, but nothing where like, has caused me like significant, you know, it, it, it more takes it me break, out of the game. It breaks, yeah, it breaks your immersion, but yes. the game's still good. You can still yes. enjoy the game, but it does break your immersion, yeah. But to be fair, I have a PC version, so I don't mm-hmm. know exactly. What, I, I just, I've seen video of some of the Xbox and, and P, PS4, Xbox One base version and PS4 base version graphics, and they look pretty bad. Uh, what's your experience so far since you've been playing? You've been playing, you played a lot more than I have. Oh, dude, I can't put it down, Dennis. It's like, mind you, I'm we, you and I are some of the more lucky people who have a PC that can run this. Yeah. Like, yeah, we're we're like we're not on, like you and I aren't on like the super high end market, but no. we're like we're we're in that stepping stones of the high end. You know what I mean? We're like, yeah, yeah. like honestly, if we just had if we did if we if we had a different if we had like a we got, we both have the 2060. If we both had the 2070, we could probably be using a bit more of the ray tracing. Yeah. Um, but b- before go- before going into the PC, I got the PC version purely because it was cheaper for some reason with regional pricing. I was um, I wanted to get it on uh, Guild of Gamers on GOG, which is owned by CD Projekt Red, because that is the DRM free copy, and I did want to get the DRM free copy. Um, and all the money that all the money goes straight to CD Projekt Red if you buy it on uh, GOG.com. 
However, they didn't have regional pricing. And I was like, mm. going to be paying an extra $40. And I was like, no, <laughs> I'm going to go to Steam. Sorry, boys. So I went to Steam. I got it. I picked it up there for, I want to say what was like, maybe about like $45. Roughly $45, $50, which is- I played the I full to, 60. I paid yeah, the full 60. I, I would have had to pay like almost 70 if I had paid it in like, or like 70 roughly with import costs and stuff. So I'm glad that I got it on PC for that reason. And also same as you, I upgraded recently this year to a, I got my PC upgraded so I can stream because you need a fairly high end PC to do streaming. Mm -hmm. Otherwise your quality suffers, like you lag. A lot of people think it has to do with their internet. It doesn't, it has to do with the amount of dedicated RAM for your OBS, et cetera, et cetera. That's why Dorian always lagged when he streamed because I was like, you need a better PC, not better internet. Um, but yeah, so far, I would say I'm in the very few amount of people who are not only enjoying the game and the experience, but like I have had very little to no glitches and bugs. Hmm. I'd say the most, I'd say like the only like major glitches that I've seen is Jackie walking through my car every now and then. Um, there was one or two other glitches where I, I would see most of them involve Jackie, you know what I mean? Uh, and his interaction with the world around him. Like sometimes this one time he was signing papers, but he was signing papers <laughs> about an inch, inch above the table. Like he was levitating and signing yeah, the yeah. papers. Um, but I think the, the, the one that I see the most is shader glitches. I see oh, okay. for me specifically. Like popping so got, textures or what? No, like, like it'll cast a shadow but the shadow will be pixelated. You know what I mean? Mm. Like the shadows on the character, but it won't be all of them. It'll be like one or two. Like if you see right. creases and folds in clothing, all the shadows will look normal, but one of the creases will look like, almost like staticky. It's uh, it's interesting. So that takes my immersion out of it, but they're not big enough for me to not enjoy the game. Like I'm loving the game right now. I'm not, Im I will say that I'm not immersed because there's a lot of things that break the immersion, but I'm having a lot of fun. Like in terms of like, obviously everyone loved the character creation build your character some people hated some people thought the character creation was like very surface level and to which i would say have you used any character creation ever mm -hmm. like it, it's not the most amazing character creator but it's definitely not the worst um story is engaging and this is like not really a spoiler i think it's worth mentioning because i've now restarted the game three times twice because what? i wanted to okay yeah, tw twice because i wanted to the third time because i had to reformat my pc um, but I wanted to like, I wanted to know, like, cause in the beginning you get three lifestyles to choose from, right? Yes. You have the nomad, the street kid, and then the corpo. And yeah. I wanted to know how much do those choices truly influence you in the game? And the thing is in the long run, it influences not a, a lot. Like you can still play the game any way you want, but the knowledge and the things you'll be, the, your dialogue actions will change depending on your origin story, uh, that, and your actual, the, the, the real differences, uh, I haven't finished the game yet, but the real differences in those three choices is your origin story, your origin mission. Mm -hmm. uh, if I may ask, Dennis, uh, who did you pick? I picked Street Kid. That's the one that I yeah. like the most. So, I, so we start in the streets, right? If we picked Corpo, we would have started in like some high-end luxury. High-rise, yeah. If we if we picked Vagabond, we would, would have been on the out streets. And then, yeah, and the situations. Nomad or whatever. Yeah, all these situations involve us eventually meeting Jackie. Mm -hmm. and then becoming friends with him, whether it's in the city or in the corporate mm -hmm. lifestyle, however it is. So it just affects your tutorial, if you will, like mm -hmm. really like story-wise, it affects that. After that, you're pretty much getting the same story as everyone else. Obviously, not, it's not linear, so it depends on your choices you make. And like, the game is really good with that. Like you can, like if you do certain side quests before other, other quests, it changes your dialogue options. If you like, if you do some optional stuff and you decide to not do those optional stuff, everything really changes. It really is like, but it's like, usually you can see these changes happen. Like, like you can make a choice and you can see the effects of your choices later on in the game. That's how most games work with this. It can be like five minutes later. You can be like, Oh shit. I'm in this situation now because I didn't take the money or I killed mm -hmm. this person I should have killed. You know what I mean? So you can, you can pretty much, you get the repercussions of your actions right away. Um, combat, the shooting for me, I think the combat needs a little bit more there. The combat's a bit meh, but I'm just melee. I, I, I hack and oh, really? hack melee stealth, man. I'm, I'm a full melee. No, build I'm, I'm the opposite of you. I'm Ooh, shooting man, people love, left like, and right. Dude, I love, yeah. I, I did like the shooting, but it was like, um, that's also something else. Every single time I had a slight complaint with the game, I had to remind myself 
luckily you and I have been speaking about this game for months. So I've known about every single thing. When I first got into a car, I was like, oh, I don't like the way this feels. So I got into another car and it felt completely different. <laughs> Like each car, like you can feel the, the momentum, the torque. Mm -hmm. Some are faster. Some have got horrible brakes. Some have got great brakes. You know what I mean? And it's the same with the guns. Like the guns I'm shooting with, I'm like, oh, I hate these. But then as you level up your character and as you get better guns, you're like, oh, you know what? Wait a second. I see where the progression lies in this. Of course, my the shooting felt bad in the beginning. I was using a really bad handgun, you know? So uh, the game does get better. But I've, I've gone for a full melee build where I just run and gun. I like have like an extra 30% armor if I have a melee weapon. So I'm just running in and I'm slashing people up. So I, I go completely full stealth hacking. And then if I get caught, I slash my way out of it. But I'm enjoying the game. I like the story. I can see me playing this game multiple times, at least at, le at least each lifestyle, the Corpo, the Nomad and the Street Kid. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, the main storyline is what? I think 17 hours. Some people complain. That yeah, short, yeah. 15 I to 20, I heard. Us, yeah, but I see me doing those at least three times over you know what i mean mm -hmm. minimum because your story will be different the npcs will react to you differently um did you do the first mission uh where Which you had one? to get the, the the robot like the first your first main mission yeah, you yeah, yeah, get yeah. Your little so we speak to a corpo lady there your interaction with that lady will be vastly different if you choose the corpo lifestyle mm. you know what i mean so you will get a, a different experience in terms of story mode if you play it differently uh each time side quests are super immersive like and they're everywhere man side quests yeah yeah everywhere i haven't even played that much yeah. and just they're throwing side quests left and right. i love that stuff i think this game this type of game was made for for you mm. and me you know big open Exploring world immersion. exploration mm. immersion different side quests different characters dialogue options you know um being able to go through. I mean, obviously I haven't gotten enough through to see like the variety of weapons and the variety of combat and the variety of upgrades that you can do to your character. And so that, that remains to be seen. I haven't gone far enough to the story to be like, oh, this is the most amazing story of all time or these side quests are amazing. I've done enough to know like, this is on the right, this is, looks like a game that was made, you know, just for me. I mean, I love, you know, those fall mm -hmm. the Fallout series and the franchise. I mean, this is kind of like GTA meets Fallout with a Deus Ex feel This is what to I it. wanted Deus Ex to be. Like, okay. this is what I actually wanted Deus Ex to be. Like, when I first saw trailers for Deus Ex, this is what I was kind of expecting. Here's where I, like, take my... It is, like, it is made for RPG players. I cannot mm -hmm. stress that enough. This game is is so heavily rooted in its rpg mechanics and i love that so for a lot of people who are looking for that like almost like that first person shooter experience you're not going to get it this is by the book an rpg and it's a great rpg the skill tree is so ridiculously in depth that you could like they could that could just be it they could just have the skill tree and that and that could be it mm -hmm. but it's not because you have your body and your cybernetics and that's a whole different freaking like skill tree that costs a lot of money uh, which mm -hmm. Going back, now that I've taken a look at that, the Mantis Blades are in the game, but you need street cred level 20 to, to unlock them. Mm -hmm. They're right off the bat. You can see them as an option, but you need to get the street cred. Um, so it's also cool how you, know, you, have to, you have this combination of some items you need a certain street cred level, some items you need a certain level, and then some items are just expensive. So it's like you might not have the street cred level, but you've got the actual level for it. You know what I mean? And there's cool ways to work around that. Like I, I'm like... Overall, I'm having a very positive experience, but I do want to say this. It's one of those things where it was just, it left a lot, it left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. We have to be honest about that. Like yeah. I didn't, I didn't play the console version specifically. I did not either. I, I didn't even open the one. I, I'm going to sell with the, the Xbox version I have because I bought the and, PC version. So I don't know. It's not worth it for me to open up the the thing it's to play to look to, it to, doesn't make to sense look at the though, graphics you know like i don't know like i get why people are complaining because look at the end of the day cd project red they didn't show us what it was like on the old gen consoles yes the they apologize for that yeah the closest we got was them showing us to what it looks like on the ps4 pro now before the game came out they released their stats for the ps4 pro they said listen on the ps4 pro you can play the game without ray tracing with 30 fps that's on the PS4 Pro. They said that before the game came out. So when I read that, I was like, okay, cool. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, it's a game that's built for next gen. Like 
people do have a right to complain. I'm never, I'm not taking that away from them, but who in their right mind wants to play a brand new next gen game on a seven year old console? It doesn't make sense to me. You know what I mean? I mean, to, you know, I mean, to be fair, it's like, when That's you like see complaining all... The Last of Us 2 no, doesn't the th- work on the I PS3. I think the problem is if you see all the, the footage from... I'm going to disagree with you. If you're seeing all this footage and trailers and all this stuff, and it's all from the PC version, and then even when they released... They only released Xbox Series... Or sorry, Xbox One X and PS4 Pro footage. They didn't show yeah. the base model Xbox One or the base model PS4, which which I think that one's the worst one of them all, if I, I'm not mistaken. Yeah, the, the PS4 base, is the, suffering. Like, yeah, like when there's people in the background or whatever they're just their faces are just like whatever and, and they're um, just disappearing like the np yeah. because they can't handle the amount of npcs like someone um, I, I saw some guy walk up to an npc punch the npc and then literally before the npc could do anything he just did a little 360 and, and the npc was gone mm-hmm. just poof gone <laughs> yeah uh so to be fair they they didn't put any of that footage out so you're watching the all the footage and stuff and you're thinking man when i get this game this is how it's going to look, you know, or maybe you might think, okay, this is the, obviously the best PC version, but my, my console version is going to look maybe a step lower. You know, you didn't know that it was going to be like that many Bad. steps l- lower, you know? I mean, even t- to be honest, I mean, we, we both have the RTX 2060 and I can only run, I don't even have a 4k monitor. I have, I have a, a one of the, uh, the 1440p monitor is where it's like three, yeah. three, 3,800 by 1440 or whatever. Um, I can play on between high to medium with no ray tracing. If I want to put ray tracing on, I got to go to 1080 and then I can mm. do it. And, and both of them, the frame rates are, or like okay you know probably like 30 frames per second like if i want to get 60 frames per second then i gotta go like maybe medium with very low settings the lower tier medium with no ray tracing so it's definitely you know if, if i'm thinking of that and i'm like okay if you don't have xbox one x or a, X, a ps4 pro i don't know what yeah like I, I don't know how it's handling any of that stuff if my you know quote unquote brand new uh video card is you know getting not middle middle of the road but above middle of the road you know yeah graphics. but i mean with with ray tracing on like because we got the same cards so like you said i tried i tried ray tracing because i did want to see it and dude the game looks beautiful yeah um and i, I had to play it on like medium to lower for ray tracing but yeah. then even then as soon as i got into a vehicle my my computer was like no as soon as i started <laughs> so as, as soon as i started moving faster than walking pace my pc was like yeah. no just don't even try. So currently I'm playing without ray tracing. I do have DLSS on. I'm pretty sure you do too. I mm-hmm. recommend that because uh, we have the same graphics cards so you could. Yeah. I'll also recommend if uh, downloading the GeForce Experience app uh, if you don't have that. And then optimi- and within the GeForce Experience app, it'll op- optimize the game to the best settings for your current build. Mm-hmm. And, and I highly recommend doing that. That's what I did. I fill- fiddled around for a while. Uh, just to see the ray tracing. But at the end of the day, I actually ended up going with the NVIDIA GeForce, what they recommended my spec should be. And I've been having a great, like I've been having no frame rate issues, literally zero issues, except for some shading issues. That's about it. Um, yeah, I haven't, yeah, I haven't fully optimized my, but like I'm just jumping between high resolution, but no ray tracing and then ray tracing lower resolution. You know, it's like, it's funny. Cause like with the higher resolution, it's nice and crisp and, Looks, mm. everything looks clean but you, you obviously you still get lighting effects but you, you're not getting like the ray tracing at all but then it's, with that, the, it's that like fake lighting effects um they explained it in their previous yeah. video where it's like they just like it's like almost like a lens flare that they've kind yeah. of put on all reflective things yeah where you know and then they put it in the ray tracing 1080 mode and it's like okay it looks you know quote unquote more realistic but then it just looks resolution wise so much less clear i guess so. did you see the skin textures on the ps4 model they i saw some of the plastic. face ones i saw yeah, some the, of the, the faces they look plastic yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like so scary so anyways CD project, cd project red is kind of issued a statement and apology uh and they're offering refunds to people who are not satisfied with uh the performance especially on the the base PS4 and the base uh, Xbox One. Uh, I, I think you pulled up 
the the apology what, what did they say in there yeah uh dear gamers first of all we would like to start by apologizing to you for not showing the game on base last gen consoles before it premiered and in consequence not allowing you to make a more informed decision about your purchase we should have paid more attention to making it play better on the playstation 4 and xbox one uh, that's the first paragraph uh, second paragraph. Second, we will fix bugs and crashes and improve the overall experience. Mm -hmm. The first round of updates has just been released and the next one is coming within the next seven days. Expect more as we will update frequently whenever new improvements are ready. After the holidays, we'll continue working. We'll release two large patches, starting with patch one in January and then patch two in February. Together, these should fix the most prominent problem gamers are facing on last gen consoles. We will be informing you about the contents of each patch ahead of its release. Um, they won't, and this is the most I stress, I cannot stress this enough to people as well reading this. They won't make the game on last gen look like it's running on a high spec PC or next gen console, but it will be closer to that experience than it is now. So keep in mind, you're still not going to be getting your PS5 or PC experience, but it's going to, it's going to be better than what it is now, which I'm pretty sure anybody wants. And then finally, uh, we would, we would always like everyone who buys our games to be satisfied with their purchase. We would appreciate it if you would give us a chance. Mm -hmm. But if you're not pleased with the game uh, on your console and you don't want to wait for the updates, you can opt for a refund of your copy. Uh, for copies purchased digitally, please refund the system uh, through your PSN or your Xbox respectively. For boxed versions, please go get a refund at the store where you bought the game. If this isn't possible, please contact us at Help Me Refund at cdprojectred.com and we will do our best to help you starting from today you can contact us for a week up until december 21st so they're giving you guys up until december 21st if you want refunds um which is a fair amount of time if you have the game right now it's more than enough time for you to play it figure out if you want it or not or if it's not going to work on your console you know what i mean yeah yeah, I think it's I mean, also, it, it gives them, them the amount of time to realize maybe maybe I don't want to play this on PlayStation 4 even when it is fixed. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like maybe I should just wait a while, bite the bullet on like the... Oof, even then, like I'd say bite the bullet, but I have no idea when Sony prices, when any console prices are going to drop anytime soon. You know? uh, yeah, that's not going to be here for a while. And also, you can play this on the Xbox Series X and the PS5, I believe but they're all the backwards compatibility version of it. It's not optimized for the, the technically the next gen version mm. is not available for you to play, but they are giving you to for free. You're not, you don't have to pay any more money. They just, you know, wait until they have uh, those yeah, ready yeah. and that's, they'll, that's they'll give it to you. Um, I bought the PC version. You bought the PC version. So it doesn't really matter to us. And, and I found that, you know, with, with the, a lot of the reviews and then even fan reviews, anyone who has like, whether it's a, a good PC or maybe the Xbox one X series X uh, PS4 pro or PS five have been much more generally satisfied and happy with the game with less of the bugs interfering with their experience. But the people who, you know, are either playing on the base models or having a lot of bugs and crashes, that's where a lot of backlash is happening and just like um, creating a lot of like negative PR for CD Projekt Red um, that they're trying to kill. I mean, it's good that they, they did release that statement and, and they are offering refunds. Um, well, but here, yeah. here's the here's the thing, Dennis. I, I, I didn't I couldn't find a good place to say this earlier, but at the end of the day, they were in such a tough position. If they delayed it again, they would have been hated. If they released yeah. it earlier, they would have been hated. No matter what they did in the, especially because they knew what the game, they knew what the game looked like on current on previous gen consoles. That's the whole reason of the previous delay was because they were like, "Wow, this is not running on PlayStation Four yeah. or Xbox One." That's the that's the reason we got the uh, the previous delay. I still think I think. Now looking back, and this is something that I said, I think I wanted them to do this. And I, I told you this as well, where it's like, just release the PC version. It's ready. You know what I mean? And just, but, but then it's they, like, they it's going to the affect their sales. Yeah, because you know it was going to affect their sales and the yeah. backlash. But I think yeah. the backlash would have been way less than what they got now. Because now people are, now the backlash is people are looking at their friends with their high-end PCs and they're like, wait, hold on. He's having a great time over there. Yeah, I'm yeah. having a poopy time. Yeah, I <laughs> mean, know? that's the thing is like, you and me decided to go with a, a much less, a much more poly, even though it still needs work. Mm. You know, this 
yeah. for all, most oh, people for are sure. saying, for most sure. people are like, it's still need another two, three months of, of work on it. Um, but you and me are getting a pretty good experience so far, uh, minus some graphical glitches. So you and me are not upset. You know, it's totally up our alley. I think overall you and you and me's experience is probably going to end up being pretty good. Fairly positive. And, yeah. And I, yeah. And I feel like a lot of the people who from the media side, um, who do have access to to either a better PC or uh, either a next gen console or at least one of the I don't know what would you call it mid gen console? What would a one X a one X and a PS4 Pro be I, I, mid gen? You know I think that's probably the best way to describe it is it's a mid mid gen console. Mid gen, now. okay. Maybe they you know they're having good but the people who are on the yeah base base models, which is still a lot of people. Uh, mm -hmm. I still have my my base Xbox. I don't use it anymore, but. Um, I still have my Xbox One uh, base model, which, yeah, I don't even know what that thing will look like. But anyways, uh, I think we need to get into a lot of uh, a lot of other stuff. Um, oh, real but, quick uh, before we yeah. head on, um, I will say based off of a PC experience, mm -hmm. the amount of bugs I'm running into are the exact same amount of bugs I ran to playing The Witcher Three on launch day mm -hmm. on PC. Mm -hmm. So looking back at that and. Like, dude, The Witcher 3 from launch day compared to now is a, a completely different game. You know what I mean? So that's how I, like, once again, I'm not speaking for console players because what they did to the PS4 and Xbox One is shocking. And I don't have words for that. The, I mean, they have words for it. They released a tweet about it, but I don't have words for that. But based off the PC experience, if you are playing this game on PC and you are having problems, with, I'm still enjoying it with the bugs, but obviously we will enjoy it way more without the bugs we are most likely going to have our game fixed before the console versions, you know, like, I mean, there's the already, there was a day yeah, zero yeah. patch. There was a day one patch. Uh, and then there, and was, there was another like a, one over the weekend. Patch. Yeah. Like a 1.04 that one hot a fix. That, that helped my, yeah. my version a lot. The, the, the hot fix helped my, I don't know if it was uh, I'm meant for PC, but it helped like my, my game just started running smoother after that mm -hmm. patch. And then yeah, obviously it, as as well, keep your driver updates, driver updates and stuff like that. If you're on PC, make sure your drivers are updated, all the yada yadas, you know? Yeah. So yeah, in general, I think we're both gonna have it. I mean, to be honest, it's not fair comparison because Yeah. Fall no, Fallout 70 the buggiest game I've ever played was playing Fallout New Vegas on the Xbox 360. Was it 360? Yeah, 360. Yeah, that thing was uh, PS3, crashed yeah. all the time. Major graphic glitches. It was the buggiest game I've ever played. I still enjoyed the game, uh, but it did have like a ton of stuff. Uh, Fallout 76, when it launched, I played that on the Xbox One. That had a, that a, had lot, a of lot of bugs in it. Not as bad as New Vegas for me, but still a lot of bugs. And it's not apples to apples. It's more apples to oranges. PC version mm -hmm. of Cyberpunk is nowhere near as bad as what I got on Fallout 76 uh, Xbox uh, One uh, two years ago. So it's, it's uh, is it two years ago or is it one year? I can't even remember anymore. About two years ago, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, also to, to be honest, the, let's be a huge part of this backlash is coming from how hyped this game was yeah. with, with, uh, with fallout 76, you had a lot of skeptics from the beginning, you know, it got a lot of backlash, but my, this got, well, I mean, in the long run, I got more backlash too, because of the whole microtransactions thing, but like, this is getting so much backlash because it's been eight years and people don't understand Dennis. Cause it's like, yes, they have been working on this game for eight years. Mm -hmm. They've also been working on other games. They've like, just because one studio was able to give you a 10 out of 10 game in the, in the course of six years, doesn't mean that another studio is going to do it in eight. You know, each studio is different. The amount of people working there are different. Crunch times are different. The way that they, they structure their companies are different. So I, I hate it when people compare that. They're like, yeah, well, look at this amazing game that was done in half the amount of time. And I'm like, it was a different situation, isn't it? It's a whole different team, a different country, a different, yeah. like, you know what I mean? I don't know. I'm not, I, I do know they, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not defending them because honestly, for what they did to the console versions, they should eat shit. But I'm having a great time on PC. <laughs> yeah, uh, their stock dropped a significant amount. I think it was like 20 something percent, uh, 20 something percent. And then I know the, the bonuses that they promised uh, the developers, they're still going to give to them despite... Because it was going to be based on like sales and, and oh, yeah. also uh, reviews. 
they were going to base it oh, wow. on like reviews as well. Um, but they decided like, look, we, we did crunch time. We said we weren't going to do crunch time. So, but we did it anyways. You guys did the work. You guys still get the money. So the bonuses are still coming to the developers. Um, but I honestly think the developers in general, CD project red in general are very concerned, not just from a monetary standpoint, but like they really want people to enjoy this game. They really want people to have a good experience. And they, I'm sure they're probably a little embarrassed by, by some of, uh, the stuff that, that happened. So I think they do want to correct this, uh, just from that type, that type of standpoint. So we'll, we'll see in the upcoming few months really uh how how this kind of ends up yeah i mean look it, it did break pre-order like it did do re- i don't know how many refunds are getting done right now but it did break records in terms of sales and in terms of day one players mm-hmm. and stuff like that so they they definitely made their money that's for sure and before we do move on because now that i have played the game a bit um first of all dennis it took me forever to figure this out because they don't tell it they don't tell you this you just have to realize it which is that are you playing with a controller Yes. If you're in a car, you just click right on the D-pad to go into third person. Ah. But they don't tell you that. <laughs> so I had to crash into so many civilians before I figured that out. Yeah, and I'm do- definitely going to be driving Cops third are not person. happy. Cops aren't happy, man. You just bump one civilian. The police are on your ass like there's no tomorrow. That's like um, Red Dead. Red yeah, Dead. It really bump into is one like, dude and people are after you. Dude, and then well, sp- I spent my first hour in that game boxing because i was like oh, really? <laughs> i can dude like when the first bumped into that first guy's like hey you want to fight with my training bot and i was like yeah sure and he's like you know there's like a whole underground boxing league and i was like you know what keanu reeves can wait i'm gonna go become night city's best freaking boxer <laughs> and that's what i did for like an hour i just went around i was like i'm gonna become the best boxer before even meeting keanu reeves but then i couldn't because some places were locked down and i couldn't access certain areas but yeah okay um all right let's move from one controversial game. topic to the next which is the game awards um i'll be honest with you i didn't watch the whole thing i just watched uh bits and pieces you know the whole pandemic thing i i do believe there should be i'm talking about in general like emmys oscars game awards all the all all these things i think they should still do in virtual ones online and whatnot but in general it's just less interesting i guess uh when everything is done virtually i mean there's nothing to be done about that about that uh, no, no worries. Um, but I did watch certain parts of it, you know, and, and did watch certain reactions to, to it. And yeah, I mean, obviously the big thing out of it is the last of us part two won a quite a number of, uh, awards, including game of the year, best game direction, best narrative, best performance, uh, Laura Bailey as Abby. Um, so it won a oh, best action adventure game. It won a lot of the major awards, especially including the top one and a lot of people aren't happy you know i'm one of those people who is on the side of four the last of us part two i thought it was a great experience um i thought it was an excellent wonderful game honestly i i put it as one of the best games i've i've played you know there's obviously some issues with it but on the other side there's people who just hate this game because of what happens I, I, you know, I still don't want to spoil it for, for people that still want to play it, but because of what certain things happen in the game that they didn't like, and that's fine. But uh, the yeah, people were upset that they that it won that many awards and they didn't think it deserved it. So, um, what's your take on Last of Us Part Two winning the main awards and a bunch of other ones, and also the backlash against it? Um. I like I the backlash was huge. That was the first thing. My, look, first of all, 2020 has been busy and rough for all of us. I didn't even know the game awards happened until I saw the backlash. It's like it's funny because I saw the announcement. IGN was like, hey guys, game awards coming up. And I was like, okay, cool. Set a reminder and I slept right through it. it it's well, it's hard. I mean, nowadays yeah. the, 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 it's hard to get through to people. I, I I only knew like maybe a day or a few days before, like, oh, game awards are coming. All right. Cool. Yeah. I think I knew four hours before the time, and then I just went to bed instead. Yeah. Um, but it was okay. So first of all, um, I'm I'm also not not too happy with their like results, but it has nothing to like. Here's the thing: the major- majority of the backlash are coming from people who don't like what happened in The Last of Us Part Two. Mm. Here's the thing: The Last of Us Part Two is a phenomenal and fantastic game. Just because you don't like what happened in the game doesn't mean it's not a f- fantastic, phenomenal game. You know what I mean? There were like, because I never finished it, but from from what I played, I really, really enjoyed it. It was smooth. It was like, 
I mean, look, comparing if we're comparing it to games that have come out in the past couple of months, it 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 deserves it. You know what I mean? Purely based off of the fact that it works. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I it's it makes sense for me. I I knew it was gonna win game of the year, especially seeing a cyberpunk got dropped till later and because of the backlash now. But I had to quick, quickly pull up the uh, the results here because I wanted to see. Um, what its contenders were yeah for, yeah what were the, the no- nominees because okay i'll before you say that i'll tell you i have the last of us part two as one of my top games of the year however my top game of the year was half-life alex uh mm. it did not win i don't know it, if it, it was, wasn't, wasn't nom- even nominated okay it wasn't even nominated yeah at least not for game of the year you know yeah, maybe yeah. for vr maybe no, no, for it won VR, it won yeah. vr game of the year easily yeah. i have a feeling the reason why I didn't get nominated for game of the year is because it's a VR game and the amount of people who were able to play it was so minimal compared to any exactly, other game. Yeah. Um, so I understand it not being nominated and not winning personally. I think that was my game of the year, but I do have last of us part two in my top, top three there with ghost of Shishima. Let me see what, what happens with cyberpunk 2077 yeah. and, and all that. But uh, so I wasn't quite as offended, but, but go on. Okay, so for the nominations, and to, to start off with, I believe it does deserve the Game of the Year award, but then it also got Best Game Direction, and I think that's where it didn't deserve the award. Mm-hmm. But nominees for Game of the Year, Doom Eternal, which I started playing about a month ago. I'm I'm loving it. Not I wouldn't I don't think that Doom Eternal would have beaten The Last of Us Part Two. It's a it's a fun game. It's a great game, but I don't really think it's Game of the Year. Final Fantasy VII Remake is a phenomenal game, but like, it's too much of a, it's too much of, I hate saying this word on YouTube, but it's too much of a, of a cock tease, you know, it's just part one. It's the reason why I still haven't played it, even though I got to review the game and I got to play the game at Square Enix's offices and I loved it. From that experience, the only thing that I was thinking was like, could they put me into like chapter 13 or something, which is the end. And I was like, this is only like a quarter into the game. And that's when I realized, oh, wait, hold on they're going to turn this into four different parts. So I would rather wait for like part three to come out before actually diving into that. But yeah, Doom Eternal, Final Fantasy VII, Ghost of Tsushima. So it went up against yeah. Ghost of Tsushima. Um, and then it went up against an indie game. And Oh, Hades? Dude, it is so good, Dennis. I cannot stress that enough. One of Hades, our uh, VR developers is loves that game. Dude, I have clocked so much hours into Hades. Like, like, hours upon hour. I've, already, I've beaten the game two or three times but it's it's a roguelike game so you can play it over and over again each yeah. playthrough is different you know <laughs> from one of my favorite studios i didn't really like the previous game they did but this one knocked it out of the park i think it got indie game of the year which it deserves if you haven't played this dennis i think it's like a 20 dollar game get it play it it is i, so, I gotta wait man so let good, me do man. say i gotta do cyberpunk 27 i actually started spider-man right before cyberpunk 2077 and i didn't get a get that far into it because then this game came out and to me like cyberpunk 27 is right up my alley this is the type of games that i absolutely love open world story driven action rpg it's all it checks off all my bot character creation dialogue all that stuff i mean obviously you need to execute well on all that stuff but if you 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 built the type of game that i like to play that's that's the type of game i like to play yeah i do i do truly think you should check out hades though purely based off of the fact that it's like it's not the game like look the games we play are the kind of games where you need to sit down and put in at least like an hour or two hours to be able to get something out of it you know what i mean like yeah. rpg wise hades dude hades you can just pick up for like 15 20 minutes get your full and leave because it's like you're just it's like an almost like an endless runner in the sense like the story is nice like the st- i love the story but the real uh, beauty of the game is in the gameplay and you can just do one run it'll like and if you die right away it's five minutes if you do a, a successful run it's like 15 20 minutes but you're never you're never gonna like i've played the game for hours and hours on end but i think you're the kind of guy that would like to play that game mm-hmm. just during like a lunch break or something when you got 30 minutes to kill if you if it's ever on sale trust me on this dennis you will not regret that buy okay. um anyways going back so that was for game that was for game of the year best game direction and here's why i disagree with them they gave it to the last of us part two i think it should have gone to ghost of tsushima mm-hmm. best game direction the nominations were pretty much the exact same well half-life alex was in there too i didn't play it so you can speak more about that like half-life alex was nominated for best game direction but it lost mm-hmm. the last of us part two hades was there as well um and I, I don't think that Hades deserves to even be on that nomination because it's like, look, I love Hades. I just spoke it up like crazy, but 
it's not a new game. In terms of game directions, it's not something new. Roguelikes have been around for a, a while. They just executed it very well, you know? Final Fantasy VII Remake, that go, did go in a good direction. But yeah, I would have got, I would have given this to Ghost of Tsushima, personally. And for, from yeah. coming from you, you may have given it to Half-Life Alex for your best game direction. Possibly. Uh, probably between Last of Us Part Two and, and Last of, or sorry, Half-Life Alex and Ghost of Tsushima. Those three yeah. were probably my top. I mean, those three are like my top games of the year. Uh, like I said, I got to yeah. weed out and play Cyberpunk 2077 and, and see where it lands on that list. Um but Half Life Alex was just to me such a like honestly like a masterpiece of an experience. It's not look, it's not there is definitely narrative and story involved. It's not as involved as Last of Us Part Two or even Ghost of Tsushima or probably even how Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. There is a definitely a narrative driving forward, but it was just a blend of the the mm. narrative plus the the gameplay experience together. Yeah. Uh, and also the, the also direction. the pace yeah. and, and the pacing as well just everything to me like the level design and was so well thought out uh i didn't i didn't feel like any type of yeah. lag to it um but well, anyways oddly enough i think i would have given it to final fantasy 17 i'm uh, sorry 17 final fantasy 7, seven just uh, just because if you're talking about best game direction I mean, look, going from I mean, but the thing is, I view eighteen bit to, to that is a huge step in yeah, like, yeah. But it's it's, hard, for it's sure. hard. I think it's it was hard for them to win because it was a remake. You know, mm, people want to see true. new stuff. It's a remake. You know, if this was labeled, you know, Final Fantasy, whatever. I, I honestly, I don't know what number they're on right now. But if it was like thirty two, right, and Inclu had, including side ones, I believe including side Final Fantasies, I believe they're on 16 currently. Okay. Even though Final Fantasy 16 is still coming out because they did Final Fantasy Zero. Yeah. Zero. Hypothetically, if it was a brand new game, I think the chances of it winning mm. more awards would, would be would be better. Um, yeah. We had, you know, uh, Ghost of Shima did win for Best Art Direction. Final Fantasy VII did win for Best Remake. Um, no Man's Sky won for Best Ongoing Game. Like you said before, Best Indie Game, Hades. Uh, best debut game, Phasmophobia, which is that indie. Uh, me, Dorian, and, and Mark played it a little bit, and it was uh, dude. Heck, it scares the shit out of me. I, I, we I played it played in on, VR, so it was very. Yeah, I played. But on it was PC very like buggy. Once a I mean, it's a, it's an indie it, game, so I feel like that game will be better next year. Yeah, it's still uh, buggy. But, with, like even with the bugs, it's scary, dude. <laughs> like say what you will. What what I hate about that game is you can't do anything about it. Your job is to find the ghost find out as much as you can and then leave. Like, I feel bad for the people who live there. You know what I mean? Like, are, are we not the, like, do we call the Ghostbusters now? They've got to make like a sequel to Phasmophobia about the guys who come in and actually get like, get rid of the ghosts, you know? Yeah. Um, real quick uh, scrolling up, um, I'm going to blast through these. So yeah, best narrative. That was Last of Us Part Two, like you said. It went up against the same games. Hades, Ghost of Tsushima, Final Fantasy mm -hmm. VII, and then 13 Sentinels, which I've never heard of. Aegis Rim, 13 Sentinels. I got nom nominated for Best Narrative, but I haven't heard of that. I do believe The Last of Us Part Two deserves Best Narrative, uh, with Co Ghost of Tsushima being a close second, in my opinion. Best Art Direction was Ghost of Tsushima, hands down. No one can argue against that. That game was stunning. Uh, I love the art direction in Hades, but it's nowhere... Like, it's pr Hades is aesthetically pleasing, and it's enjoyable to look at. Ghost of Tsushima will take your freaking breath away, you know what I mean? Um, Final Fantasy VII had great lighting. Ori and the Will of the Wisps was more stylized and pretty, but yeah, Ghost of Tsushima, best art uh, art direction, can't argue there. Best score and music was Final Fantasy VII Remake, and it went up against Doom Eternal, Hades, Ori, the Will of the Wisps, and The Last of Us Part II. I don't know how I feel about this. I love the music in Final Fantasy VII, uh, mm -hmm. VII the remake, and that's actually one of my best, it's my go-to Spotify playlist for when I'm gaming or reading or anything, mm -hmm. but the Doom Eternal soundtrack is so hard, Dennis. It is so hard. Like when me and Dorian are playing Apex, we just listen to that. Like it is, mm -hmm. that's my go-to like gaming soundtrack. Even if I'm not playing Doom Eternal, I just put that on because it just gets me so pumped. So I can't believe that they lost to Doom Eternal. I truly thought Doom Eternal would have won or maybe even The Last of Us Part Two, because I did like the music in that as well. The music is really good in that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um Best audio design that went to The Last of Us Part Two. That makes sense to me as well. That makes a lot of sense to me. But it went up against Half Life Alex. What would you say the the audio design was like in Half Life Alex? It was great. It was great. Yeah, I played with uh, my headphones on the whole time. 
you know i mean that's the thing about half-life alex like it was a polished polished i mean they've been working on it for a long time valve has a ton of money look like i said they made that game for vr i mean for the the concept of VR. they could have made this game um be a regular pc game they was sold 10 times the amount they wanted to show off you know vr the vr experience or whatnot so they really spent the time to polish up that game i yeah i can't even, i mean there there might have been a few bugs in that game but it was minor compared to like any other game you know that i've played all right well uh, uh getting along real quick best performance as we know went to laura bailey as abby from the last of us part two um I, th- I figured it would have either gone to her or Ashley Johnson for for uh, for Ellie for The Last of Us Part Two. Um, other nominations include uh, uh, Daisuke from uh, Ghost of Tsushima, Jin Sakai, which also phenomenal uh, phenomenal performance, but in my opinion, doesn't really come close to the performances in The Last of Us Part mm-hmm. Two. Those are like truly phenomenal actors that they hired. And then they also uh, nominated Logan Cunningham as Hades from the game Hades, which like you heard me hype up Hades. I love it. But Mm -hmm. you can't compare a voice actor and a mocap actor. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think I don't I don't think it's fair. Same with um, uh, Marvel, uh, Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales. Um, He also got nominated. But like, Mm -hmm. I don't know when you when you when you look at The Last of Us Part Two and you see the amount of like mocap that they do in physical acting as well as voice acting, it makes sense to me that they won that. Mm -hmm. Uh, games for impact um, for a thought-provoking game with a pro-social meaning or message I always wondered what they meant by that the winner was tell me why uh, from Mm -hmm. the people that made um, the uh, uh, what's that strange was it strange life is strange yeah life Life is strange strange, sorry yeah Yeah, which is so it's just a a narrative game very story-based and then uh, another game that got nominated is spirit fairer which I played I love it it reminds me a lot of Animal Crossing, except it's all on one ship. And it's all about you helping these people cross to the other side because they're dead. And it's like these cute relationships you build with them. It's a very adorable, very wholesome game. And then all the other games that got nominated, I've never heard of before. Mm-hmm. Um, best ongoing, No Man's Sky. Thank the Lord Jesus. It deserves this. It really does. Because No Man's Sky now, Dennis, compared to when it came out, is it's a whole different game. Like it is, it's, it's, it's still lacking pvp in my opinion like true pvp is lacking that but other than that like if you're going to play an open sandbox game open uh, so survival sandbox game like you're either going to play this or minecraft you know what i mean in my opinion there's a bunch of other ones you could be playing like arc but i keep finding myself going back to these two games for that reason so yeah no man's sky loved it other nominations were fortnite it wasn't going to win again let's be honest call of duty warzone um i don't think that's been longer long i don't think it's been around long enough for them to say it's the best ongoing destiny 2 um was also nominated and then apex legends which i figured apex legends must have been a close runner up mm-hmm. uh, best indie hades um i in my opinion some of the other other things worth mentioning is spirit fair which i told you about just now and then also carrion carrion is amazing i don't know if you've heard of that it's like this almost like 8-bit platformer game but you play this like monster shape-shifting monster that kind of it's just i can't explain it but if you ever get the chance to look it up look it up and then fall guys was also nominated best mobile game among us by far of course among us was going to win the best mobile game uh other, i mean it was opinion, it was a cultural thing i mean you had uh, a cultural phenomenon dude yeah you had like aoc playing among us you know with with the mm-hmm. uh, people and stuff like you that had, it, you've had like youtubers blow up because of it yeah, like Cor- Corpse is now famous, famous because of it. He was famous before the time, but now he's like famous, famous, pulling in like five or six million views a video, killing it. So yeah, the cultural phenomenon, uh, cultural phenomenon. Um, and then I don't know if like, those are the big ones. There's still a bunch, but I don't know if you actually want to talk about the rest. Yeah, I mean, just name off of you know best action game Hades one. Uh, RPG was Fantasy Final Fantasy seven. Fighting game was Mortal Kombat eleven Ultimate. Oh, best multiplayer game was also Among Us, so it won mobile plus multiplayer game, and so. Oh, I, I sorry, I just read the mo- the the mobile one there. I didn't see multiplayer, but that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. So best, best, right. com- best community support was Fall Guys, and I don't believe that for a second. I don't, I don't believe that for a second, man. Like that game fell off so hard. Like I don't know. I like Valorant got nominated, but yeah, no, let's yeah, best yeah. VR, Half Life, Alex, like you said, yeah. yeah. 
Uh, family game, Animal Crossing, that was another cultural phenom- phenomenon. It's it's funny because like hardcore gamers, really, you know, we're talking about people who are playing Last of Us Part Two, Ghost of Shima, Half Life, Alex, uh, Hades, like all those type of games. But then you have the, the the ones that are like branch off into more casual slash cultural phenomenons. One was Among Us, one was um, Animal Crossing. You know, mm. uh, and then Phasmophobia to a smaller level. You know what I mean? Those are like three games that kind of like really appealed to a wider range that that uh, some of the other hardcore ones didn't didn't have that much of an uh, impact on, on the non-playing uh, community. I, I got a question for you real quick because I, uh-huh. I know we're not going to read all the nominations here, but a game got nominated that I love, but I don't understand why it got nominated which was um hold on it was by best rpg um be, where that was final fantasy yeah here got nominated for um best role-playing game which was persona 5 royale like mm. that's literally just the game of the year like persona 5 came out like three years ago mm-hmm. but persona 5 royale is just that but with all the dlcs so it's like can you really nominate it you know what I mean? The game is like three years old. You, it's just yeah. a new bundle. You know? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how they nominated it. It's it's not new. I love the game. Don't get me wrong. Love the game, but it's not new. Yeah. Um, and then how do you feel about creator? Was it creator of the year? Um, yeah, content creator of the year, Valkyrie. How do you feel about that? I, well, I, think- I guess mind you, I'm I'm more like tuned in with like the streamers and the content creators. I think it's well deserved. There yeah, are other I'm people. Not really. Who, yeah. There are some people who thought that they would have gotten it, like Dream or Corpse, because of how much they've blown. Dude, Dream got 9 million subscribers in less than a year. Like, he he went from, like, a YouTube, a Minecraft YouTuber who had, like, about a million subscribers, maybe 1.2 million for years. And then he was in a Mr. Beast video. And then within the course of, I think, eight months, he got 9 million subscribers, which is insane. So I mm-hmm. figured it would have been him. But he's a faceless uh, YouTuber. And also that happened more recently. I think Valkyrie has been grinding since the end of last year. Like Mm -hmm. she's also very, she's enjoyable to watch. She's not like one of those typical like streamers who, I don't know how to explain. She's just a normal streamer, like regardless of what she looks like or what her gender is. That's what what I like. I mean, honestly, the reason I I don't really know too many of the people other than like a few of the the bigger ones. I'm sure you know Alana Alana Pierce. Yes, I do do know IGN. Yeah, yeah. Um, It's just... I barely have enough time to play the games I want to play. I just don't have the time to watch other people play games. You know what I mean? Like I barely have enough time to play the ones I want to play. So um, like to me, like this whole weekend, I wanted to just like sit down and play Cyberpunk 2077 all weekend, but I, I couldn't because I like a bunch of other stuff I had to, had to do, you know? So it's like, that's where like, I'm like, I have to draw the line on certain Mandalorian season two. I haven't watched one second of, even though same, I've been, I, spo- I, but I, everything's been spoiled for me. You know, I've already heard oh, like yeah, this and that. I'm, and all. I'm so out of the loop. I'm so yeah. happy. I've had zero spoilers so far. Of so season two. yeah, it's just it's just a, a a question of time. If I could like freeze time and like catch up on a ton of stuff, I I would. But uh, anyways, uh, the other side effect or not side effect, but the other news, the big news to come out of the uh, Game trailers, Awards, yeah, yeah, is trailers for new games or games, games they've already announced but we haven't seen trailers for or surprise ones. I, I want to start off with this one first because I feel like, t- at least to me, it's the biggest quote unquote announcement from there is the new Perfect Dark. Because, oh, yeah. It is, you know, it's obviously a, it's a popular franchise, but I never thought of it as like a top tier franchise, right? It's like, uh, people, you know, Rare made it. It was off the, the you know, the off of their success with uh, GoldenEye, uh, James Bond. They wanted to make their own game that they could own that their own IP because James Bond wasn't their IP. But, you know, that one's a classic. It got a lot of good critical response. It sold well, pretty well. Um, but through the time, it just hasn't had, you know, the the biggest, you know, I don't know. It, it just, it's just not right now something that I, I felt that the initiative, which is what we call, quote, what they call the quote unquote quadruple A studio that Microsoft has put together by pulling together all these you know, uh, producers and designers and level design and all these people from all these great games like God of War, Red Dead and all this stuff together. I just don't know if this is the right game for them or right property for them to do their first game with. Don't get me wrong. Trailer, I thought looked great, look exciting. 
I just don't know why this is their first game. Why not do a brand new IP? The whole thing about, you know, cr- putting together these first party ex- exclusive game titles is to create new. That's why they bought Bethesda. Even though those aren't new IPs, they, they took these ex- these beloved franchises and now supposedly let's say fallout becomes exclusive to xbox right then that's what this and perfect dark is a good one but i just thought they were going to create a brand new they're going to make their own god of war their own uncharted or their own red dead whatever that may be um i thought that's what they were going to do so perfect dark to me just didn't to me you know i don't you know i don't have the big bucks that they do just didn't seem the right choice. One, what was your take on the trailer? And what do you take out of that? This is the initiative's first game. Um, to answer your first question, um, I always knew that this was coming eventually. Okay. I'll be honest. Like I like for years, I knew, I knew that it's just too good of an IP to not come back to same with Dino crisis. Eventually they're going to go back there. You know what I mean? Um, I'm pretty sure we covered that like months ago, last year, sometime too, that yeah. they might be, remastering that but i thought we were going to get a remake or a remaster i didn't this looks like it's i mean it doesn't look like it. this is obviously going to be from the ground up you know what i mean yes like yes. complete complete remake not remaster you know what i mean um or there's so many reboot remasters whatever the yeah. term you want to use is the point is it's i'm i'm so excited that we're getting something most people nowadays most gamers nowadays are too uh, too young to even have heard of perfect dark or have played perfect dark you know what i mean which is a little scary to think of considering my age and your age you know what i mean uh-huh. like it's uh but yeah so i'm i'm excited that it's happening but at the same time i think i'm on the same page as you i'm a little sad that this is what the initiative is going to work on you know what i mean like you got you just put together like this uber ultra team and then you're going to be giving us an old ip and it's like i'm not mad at it but it's like it was like you said it was just such a great opportunity to make a new ip but then again, maybe yeah. it wasn't worth the risk. And maybe also, it's not yeah. even a s- complete story based. I mean, remember, Perfect Dark was a first person shooter a la GoldenEye. You know, they had multiplayer, mm-hmm. you know, they, there was everything a story to it, but it wasn't like story driven. Yeah. Game. More just, you were playing it because you weren't playing GoldenEye, <laughs> you know, like that's yeah, my experience. It was supposed to, it was, yeah. And it was just, you know, quote unquote, like a, it was supposed to be a more modern, you know, because GoldenEye used a lot of older weapons and wanted using the James Bond IP. Mm. And it, it was, was fun. Engine, yeah. 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 But just, I don't know. I, I guess I was just expecting something different. And maybe when this you, game comes out and be like, this game is the most awesome game ever. And I take everything I said back, but I'm just saying initially that's my, reaction it's not even not even based on the trailer because i thought the trailer was very cool but I, yeah i don't know do you think it was too much of a risk for them to create a new ip because no I, I look, the thing it, it would it was the best opportunity to create a fresh new ip unless yeah. it was one of those things where they really sat down at like the boardroom table shooting ideas for like a good like week and they're going like yo i can't come up with anything that hasn't been made already Let's go do perfect dark. Like, unless that was the situation, I just, but no, because if also, if you look at this, okay, mind you, this is a trailer. We're not looking at anything in game. This could have been put together this year for all we know, but I don't know, man. I don't, I also don't think that it's the only, did they say it's the only thing they're working on? They didn't say only, they just said it's the first one. Just their first project. So hopefully they are working on something else also like, in my opinion, I feel like they're doing this because they can release it sooner than a fresh new IP. You know what I mean? I guess. Like, so maybe they are working on something big in the background. Um, I just like, like I said, I don't know. To keep in mind though, Dennis, you and I are both excited for this game. It's just the fact that it's coming from the initiative mm-hmm. is like a little. It's a little for, disappointing feel, for me, I guess. That's, uh, for me, it's not even disappointing. It's just a little confusing. You know, like yeah, confusing and disappointing, I guess. I feel like there's so many other studios they could have chosen to have done this and then used the like that's hype, dude. The initiative that there's all like there was already hype around that studio, like yeah. without them having even spoken about a game, they've already built hype. And now that hype of the, in my opinion, the studio hype is down. The hype for the game is up, but the hype for the studio is like down. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I don't know. It's an interesting choice, like you said. Yeah, I'm looking right. forward to it, though. Yeah, so anyone who's watching or listening, let us know what your thoughts are on Perfect Dark being the first uh, the initiative project and what you thought thought about the teaser trailer. So there's a bunch of other stuff. We had 
Mass Effect. Uh, I mean, we knew a new Mass Effect was coming, but they finally dropped a, a, a little teaser trailer there, kind of signaling that this uh, will be connected, be like kind of a sequel to the trilogy versus, uh, you know, uh, Andromeda. Andro- which Andromeda. Did not, I think it's, you know, which did, it's supposed to like overwrite it or something. I may have. I don't know. Or maybe be like a, a sequel to both or something. I mean, there's there's an Ansari, which they think it's, Everyone's speculating it's Liara. It looked like Liara to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, connecting it to, to Shepard. Well, it, see... it takes place after the third game. I know that. Like, it's yeah, supposed yeah. to follow follow the third game. So, yeah, someone said it to me where it's like, here's here's the thing why they didn't like. Uh, here's like, There's a lot of reasons Andromeda failed. But from a story perspective, the reason why it failed was because it was kind of like, Hey, look! Look at humanity. Be a little bitch and run away with its tail between its legs. Let's go find some colonies instead of fighting back. Mm-hmm. Where now they're like, you know what? No, no, we're gonna fight back. We're not gonna go roam the galaxy for a new home. We're gonna, we're gonna go, we're gonna fight back. So that's what I think people are excited for. Also, from all the Mass Effect fans I've seen out there, everyone is saying they're like, this is your last chance. Yeah. If you guys screw <laughs> this one up too, this is your last chance. I swear to God, if you guys ruin this one too someone takes that IP out of your hands. You don't get it anymore, you know? But it's funny because it, yeah. everyone's saying last chance, but they they had... I didn't play on drums, so I'm not saying this from oh, it's bad. my, my <laughs> actual opinion, but from what other people have said, they said it's more of a mixed bag, right? There's some good stuff, some bad stuff, or some people didn't like it at all or whatever. They just said it didn't live up to the level of the Mass Effect trilogy. If it had it's, nothing to do with Mass Effect, it would have been better because it still it would have been a fun game if it had nothing to do with Mass Effect. If it was a, if it was a different yeah. sci-fi game, it would have done better. But yeah, C- coming. So from it's just funny. One, it's one only three, one quote unquote yeah. miss quote unquote misstep, you know. Um, mm. But dude, it was a bad bad misstep. I mean, if you think about it, I think it was like a month or two later, the the game was already on sale for like seven dollars, dude. Mm-hmm. And they were like like marking it down to like three four dollars, like two months later. It was they, they took a big hit, like, and they took a big loss mm-hmm. on that. So, and people, and people, I'm excited think, for it. Yeah, I like so the trailer. Am I, so am I. I think that, like, I think that they learned their lesson. No one's gonna, they're not gonna make another Andromeda. Like, they would be stupid to. Like, I, I and I, and I, ba- I base that off of a different company, which is Dragon Age, which we'll talk about just now. Which is that Dragon Age Two sucked. Yes, it was, linear. it was linear. It was the most linear, yeah. thi- ba- like force feeding you kind of thing. I ever. played a few hours and I stopped. I don't they, for so Dragon they, Age. Exactly. But they looked at that and then they released Dragon Age Inquisition, which was which is awesome. The best superior. one in the series. Yeah. Best like one it's, in the series. For me, the story in the first one is the best, but the mechanics in the in Inquisition. To me, the so, level so design in in this in Inquisition was amazing. It yeah, you're right. It's it also with all the DLCs and the extra dragons and stuff, dude. It's so good. It's, it's so worth it to get the game of the year edition of that game. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It looks it looks sick. Um, I'm gonna get it. Actually, I don't know. I'm gonna wait on this one. I'm gonna wait to see wait for the reviews. Because because I got Andromeda and that was like, oh man. Like I I luckily I, I got a hard copy, yeah. so I just returned it. Yeah. Um, um Dragon Age. Oh sorry, yeah, like you mentioned, Dragon Age, they also had a mm. teaser. Their teaser was less uh I don't know. It had a what's it what's his name? Why am I blanking on that character's name? talking through I'm, it um i'm skipping through it now so i can see if i can blanking see his on his name valis is that his name yeah oh, solace sola uh, solace no, that's not that's not solace uh, is it no no it's not solace uh it's, it is it's, it's, it, solace has got more of a lighter voice yeah and then uh, is, Var- it, is Var- it varic varic it, it could be varic okay um yeah, that's that's Varric. That's Varric. Okay. But um, yeah. So it's not not I'll, actual gameplay, obviously. No. It looks no, no. freaking beautiful. Like I will say, based off of the world design, I'm excited for this because just them showing me like what some of these places are gonna look like, or at least what they're going for, I'm I'm there for it, man. It's so vastly different from any other Dragon Age game I've played before. You know what I mean? Like yeah. world, world building wise, I want to say. Um, but yeah, that's also something we've known about for a while because I think they really uh, they showed screenshots like last year at the previous E3, or they like showed mm-hmm. us like it's coming. Or they only sh- so here we're still not seeing uh, gameplay footage, but they are showing us a lot of concept art. 
mm-hmm. and it does look sick man i can't wait for another drag- dragon Inc- yeah dragon age i can't wait yeah so you okay so on top of these two kind of trailer releases we also had earlier in the week that uh, announcement that uh some of the bioware leader leaders are leaving <laughs> leaving uh bioware um let's see uh casey yeah. hudson and mark dara uh i mean all the con- projects that they were working are still you know coming you know being worked on but uh they basically the general manager of bioware carrie hudson and uh casey hudson and mark dara the executive producer of dragon age are leaving the company so you know i don't know what this means <laughs> You know, it can't mean anything good, man. <laughs> like, so I'm just, uh, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, oh. when, when EA bought uh, BioWare, it's just people, and then you saw what happened with Anthem and Andromeda. It's, it, it's one of those things that, like, it creates EA a lot kills of kills studios, man. That's what it causes it causes a lot of hesitation and anxiety for 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 fans. Who knows? I mean, the games could come out and they could be awesome. Still, I'm just saying, it's just it doesn't build a lot of confidence, I guess, in, in yeah. fans. Well, EA is very harsh with their turnarounds and their deadlines, like very harsh, and that's what makes the studios suffer. Is that a lot of a lot of the studios are used to being independent. They're not used to like having forced deadlines. You know. It's worrying news, but other than that, it's just like when EA gets involved in any company, that's worrying news for me because it's, it's, it's just, I mean, sure, you can chalk it up to greed or whatever you want to chalk it up to. Like, and I don't even hate their microtransactions that much. It's the fact that they, whenever they acquire new studios, they gave these, they always give these new studios like much harsher deadlines and like they expect a quicker turnaround and EA puts the pressure onto these new studios. And I believe that's why they fail. Like Anthem is 100% EA's fault. Like a hundred percent. It's because of the deadlines that they were pushing and the turnaround they were pushing. Uh, but speaking about uh, Mark Dara leaving and Casey Hudson leaving, um, that does worry me about mm-hmm. the next Dragon Age, but also keep like, I mean, look, I, I just watched the trailer about them talking about, um, the dev team talking about Dragon Age. So they had the teams there, the teams mm-hmm. together, team, the teams working on it. I don't know how involved Casey or Mark were before the time. Hopefully their roles weren't that big. I really hope not because I just I just want a good Dragon Age game, Dennis. Like I, I'm also one of those very few people who are actually hoping for Anthem next because I got to play Anthem, I think it was two months ago mm-hmm. and I enjoyed it. Obviously okay. I, I, it's, it's like, it's vastly different from day one because the day one launch of Anthem was trash and the game still lacks quite a bit in terms of a games as a service thing. Like Mm -hmm. it needs to be tweaked here and there, which I think they will do with Anthem next. But I think that Anthem next is now on the very bottom of their to-do list. You know what I mean? Because yeah, they're also doing the the remaster for the Mass Effect uh, one, two, and three. They're doing the legendary editions, the remasters. They're probably going to push those out first for money and then I have a feeling they're going to only focus on Dragon Age and then maybe we'll get um, Anthem next. And, and there's a speculation of the Knights of the Old Republic uh, part, oh, yeah. one and part, uh, part one and part two remaster. You know, there's just a lot of things yeah. that, that that people are working on EA trying to squeeze out some money, you know, so. I think I think that's definitely going to happen. But I think we're going to I think we're only going to see an announcement in like two years from now. You know what I mean? Really? Like, I don't know. Like, I think we're not even going to see a trailer, like, because they still haven't even announced it yet. We've just yeah. been able to speculate. And it's like, it's going to happen because of the sources we've checked and stuff. So it's going to happen. Okay. But whether they drop it or not, who knows? Like, that's another question. How many of these projects are going to get dropped in the future? Um, I doubt any. I doubt any. I think they're going to do all the projects, well, but it's more <laughs> just the quality of the projects now. I mean, to be honest, like these remasters, it's just money like lying there for them you know what i mean it's like the game's already built obviously i'm not saying there isn't work that gets done to it and there's no improvements made being done to it but what i'm saying is these are beloved usually they're beloved games that people already love and have both a nostalgia plus you know whether it's maybe it's a game like to me nice little republic is one of my favorite games of all time Mm -hmm. one of my criticisms of the game though is the combat system is just kind of like old school just like how final fantasy 7 got their combat remade they can do that with knights of the old republic you know and i'll definitely buy it you know what i mean that's like an instant buy for me for them to remaster it um and so 
it's just money like they know it's like guaranteed money you know with those remasters like they never they don't lose money on those things at least not to my knowledge yeah i mean like also they're not really saying the reasonings like like they've got they've got message they've, they, they've stated like in posts saying like oh it's going to be hard to leave it's a tough decision but no one's that no one's saying why you know mm -hmm. and that, that always worries me like like if if it wasn't a bad if it, if their reason for leaving was personal they would say so like i'm leaving because of family matters or personal reasons mm -hmm. you know but when when people when people leave a company like this and they just say that they're looking forward to the future that's worrying if they were retiring i'd be like okay cool this guy's tired he's let him retire but yeah. the fact that he's saying i'm looking forward to the future means he's going to be looking for other employment yeah which means that it's got to be i think maybe he's conflict just, uh, with with uh, usually it's always yeah. conflict with upper management i mean that's usually what... yeah, conflict with upper management as well as possibly creative conflict i think yeah um yeah i just don't know man i don't know it's one of those things where it's like it could be good. It could be bad. It, it really depends on who they're going to get to replace them. It tr that's really, really what it comes down to. And then also like whoever's going to take their place, the amount of fucking stress on their shoulders. I feel bad for them, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, um, so I don't want to go to through every game, but I just want to list off some of the other trailers that came out like uh, back for blood, which is kind of the left for dead type style I'm game. so stoked for that sorry I, I uh, forgot about that dude I'm so stoked for that game I'll say one thing it's like I do like that they include some uh, gameplay footage at the end of that because when I was watching just the um cinematic beginning I was like uh not that the cinematic was bad it's just like there's only so much you can know about a game based on cinematics I want to see some game and they did show some gameplay footage which, which was good I'm just you know Especially for a game that's not, it's not an RPG. It's not, do you know what I mean? It's not a story based game, mm -hmm. right? So why do, oh, yeah, why no. do I, why do I want to base, you know, uh, the entire, you know, hype uh, around a cinematic trailer when it's not a quote unquote story cinematic game, you know? But they did show some footage, look cool, look like Left 4 Dead. Um, yeah. I'm particularly uh, excited for that one just because I've spent so much time and it's the original team from Left 4 Dead, yes, the original yes. Left 4 Dead team. It's and it's essentially a spiritual successor because even the characters, they're the characters from Left 4 Dead just yeah. at a much higher resolution, which I feel like they can now. I was for a second, I was worried because I'm like, I don't know if they own the original IP or no. if they own the rights to those characters. But the no. thing is, even though these characters are clearly the original characters, but at a much higher resolution and better texture. It's like, I feel like they're in the clear because it's like, you can look at the old low poly models and be like, you could argue it's the same character, but you could also argue this is a good look. My they're guys just, got, they're going to change. My the guys name. got wrinkles, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. but I'm uh, so, no, that's I'm so still Val, this, Valve owns that IP still. Yeah. Um, but it's, they like, it's like you said, it doesn't need a story. You just show up, you show up with your friends, you shoot zombies. What, yeah. what more do you need to know? You buy your weapons, you shoot the zombies, you survive. Yeah, uh, Disco Elysium Final Cut had trailer, Arc 2, mm. which uh, Vin Diesel is in, Evil Don't Dead Game, started. Evil Dead Game, Crimson Desert, uh, Outriders had an awards trailer. Uh, oh, they also, uh, whatchamacallit, I don't, yeah, I think they had a trailer for it. So Flight Simulator is coming to Xbox because, you know, we mm, know yeah. it was already on, on PC before. Um, so those are a bunch of trailers also being announced at, at, at the game awards. Uh, I kind of want to get into our next big topic that, like I said, normally would probably be the, the main topic for any given week, but they finally announced when Halo Infinite was coming out and it's much mm. later than the, we thought we thought, okay, they want to tweak it. It's going to be in the spring, maybe early spring of next year, 2020. No fall of 2021 um it's an xbox series x exclusive well it's going to be for pc as well and xbox one by that time though xbox one it's like okay i mean i guess you know some people will still be buying it there but it's really going to be made for uh next gen consoles and high-end pcs they released uh some pick you know some photos of some multiplayer uh maps um you know they're really trying to update the graphics because people were complaining including myself i wasn't so much complaining i was just more like well it doesn't look as next gen as we thought it was gonna, gonna look and i think they're yeah. reworking some of that stuff but anyways yeah it kind of uh, looked a little 
and I, and I might be using this word wrong, but it kind of looked a little pastel. You know what I mean? Mm. Like it, it seemed like the character, like, I don't like, cause it seemed like a choice they made specifically. Like I agree. It didn't look next gen. It looked very crisp, but it kind of like, it looked matte, if that makes sense. You know, like how you get black, but then you get matte black. It kind of looked like that. It looked like the matte version of uh, Halo Infinite. Mm. <laughs> but you know, also we had heard right before they delayed that they were going to make multiplayer free to play. Um, so that mm. may be something they're also working on anyways. So it's not what we thought. So that's why I'm telling you, like, I may not get an Xbox Series X or even a PS5 until maybe end of summer next year. I mean, the way things are looking right now, I just I just don't see where I need to upgrade right now, especially since my mm. PC can handle most everything. I'm catching up on the PS4 catalog that I didn't get to play because I didn't have a PS4 until recently. Uh, did you finally finish quite- of War? Yeah, I finally finished God of War. It's fantastic. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm getting to enjoy these games that maybe other people have already done with. You know, I've got, I finished uh, Last of Us Part One, Part Two, Ghost of Tsushima, and God of War this year, you know? And nice. these are games that are, you know, excellent AAA titles that are exclusive to the PS4 platform. I mean, obviously, I know you, you can place, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, like, I'm, I have a Horizon Zero Dawn um, that I'm going to play uh, soon. Well, are you going to do the PC soon, or PS4? I, I had the PS4 version. I, uh, I bought it on a, for like 10 Dude, you're going to love the, you're going to love the gameplay and the story. Both of Yeah, them, so both, both of those are winners. The story I got to finish Spider-Man play. first, but anyways, so I still have a lot of stuff that I want to play. So for me I'm good. I'm good. I don't have to mm-hmm. upgrade right away. So the delay to 2021 isn't that much of a killer for me. It's just that from a selling console point of view, it's just like where we have this perfect dark. Okay, that's a series exclusive, uh, Series X exclusive. Xbox Series X just doesn't have the games right now to even games that are within their um, ecosystem, like Xbox One, PC, and, and Xbox Series X. They don't even have those exclusives right now. You know, at least Sony has. Miles Morales, they have um, Horizon uh, Forbidden West coming out next year. They have a few other small, you know, they isn't like Sackboy and and like Astro Boy, whatever, Astro Bot, and at least those are these like these small bug snacks, like smaller exclusive games to them. Um, so yeah, well, bug I, snacks is on Epic Games. You can oh, is it? PC. Okay, okay, I, maybe I'm wrong I about didn't, that. I, okay, didn't I didn't even know. That. know. Yeah. Neither like the only reason I know is because I saw it on the Epic Games Store. Yeah. Like as far as I know, they didn't talk about that. But yeah, it's yeah. on PC. But either way, I just I think technically Godfall is a timed exclusive. Um, didn't get that great of reviews uh, for that one. But anyways, the the, the delay to fall twenty twenty one I think I think hurts them. Not so much for me, but just for other people kind of looking for a reason to buy an Xbox Series X. You know, like. Uh, anyways, uh, I mean, what's your take take on all this? Um, hmm. I mean, look, like you said, it's coming to PC, so I'm not bothered. Like that, that's my main thing. Like, if I didn't have a PC, then I would because this is actually the first Halo in a long time that I want to play. Mm-hmm. Like, not just like look, every Halo trailer like grabs me, but the gameplay that I saw, the gameplay that people were complaining about, I really. Graphics wise, I wasn't too happy, but gameplay wise, I was very yeah. They happy. they were like, co- they were fun, you know. They weren't complaining about the gameplay; they were complaining about the, just the graphics. Yeah, <laughs> they and were like, like "This, are you sure fun. this is next gen?" That's what they, so, they were. They were looking at like, "Oh, this looks like Xbox One X quality," you know. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's the best way to put it. And I'm I'm looking forward to it because it's I don't know I, I can't explain why. It's just I just know it's the first Halo in a very long time that I'm looking forward to playing. And if I didn't own a PC. I 100% would have gotten myself, I would have leaned towards the Xbox based off of uh, Halo Infinite and the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. Based off of those two things, I would have lent, I would have gone towards getting an Xbox. I mean, even right now, I'm still leaning more towards Xbox because of their Game Pass, but I'm, uh, going, also, to myself, uh, I'm going to get a PlayStation though, because I it, it, Fallout is have exclusive. My, have <laughs> but then again, it'll be on PC anyways too. I mean, that's the benefit PC, about those. Exactly. The, that's also why I'm, the, uh, yeah. 
Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, that's why, that's why I'm waiting. I'm going to get the PS five. I'm tr- I'm going to think like March or June. I, that's mm-hmm. I just, I'm waiting for their second run of production. Like I said, cause it's going to be less strenuous. I don't want their slim model. I just don't want their launch model. Cause I always get the launch model and I always have problems with the launch model. So I'm going to wait till like March to get that. Um, and, but yeah, if I didn't have a PC, I really would have been torn between the two. I would have been more towards Xbox because of their deals, but PlayStation has some of the more, ex- in the long run, they've got the exclusives I, ru- I want, you know, like Final Fantasy, which is also now not really an exclusive anymore, you know, as far as I know, I think that's on all the platforms. Um, God of War, that's still going to be an exclusive, mm-hmm. but thank God I have a PC so I can have the best of both worlds, you know, yeah. but I'm really I mean, looking forward to Halo Infinite, like yeah. the pushbacks, the pushback does suck, but I'm not a diehard Halo fan, so I don't care. I also think there's more than enough things right now to keep people busy until then. You know what I mean? Even with games coming out early next year, there's Mm -hmm. so much coming out January, February that you'll be busy. You'll forget the delay even happened, Mm -hmm. in my opinion, you know? And there's not enough, there's not that much hype around it, which is a good thing because there's no one complaining, you know? As far as I can tell, no one's really complaining about this this pushback of Mm -hmm. because they don't care you know which is a blessing in disguise because the game could come out and it could kick ass and it could just like pull in some amazing numbers but right now people are like they don't care about the game which i think is a good thing that way expectations there so far there are zero expectations for the game in my opinion you know what i mean or some diehard fans have got high expectations but the majority of people they don't care they don't have expectations so when the game does come out they'll be like oh yeah i'll try this and then they'll be pleasantly surprised that's what i think yeah um, uh, side note here, Master Chief is now available skin in Fortnite. Correct. In Fortnite, yeah. Uh, also, then... the Mandalorian. If you didn't know that, like the Mandalorian yeah. was the he's like the he's the if you get the battle pass, you get the Mandalorian for free, which is really cool. And then Walking Dead's Daryl and Michonne will be added on December sixteenth. Mm. Um, I'm looking forward to that. I'm gonna get my I'm gonna get Daryl. I'm looking yeah. forward to it. Cool. Um, Hyrule, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity came out. Uh, pretty positive reviews to it. Mm. You know, blending that Dynasty Warriors. Um, we talked a lot about this, but anyways, it, it came out. A lot of good positive yeah. reviews. I'm, I'm, for I'm a it. huge fan of the. I'm a huge fan of the Warriors series. Like I said, yeah. and you know what you're getting with those games. They're all they're all exactly the same game, but it's like now you get to do it in yeah. the Kingdom and of also Hyrule, the, there you know? is you know the tie-in with Breath of the Wild and, and just mm. they said that there's you know they have these story moments within it to you know to keep you interested more yeah. than just just playing the game. So and that's why it's more of a winner than the previous Warrior games. Well, you get the base Dynasty Warriors, that's its own thing. But usually when they do like One Piece Pirate Warriors or when they do any other Warriors game, it's like you're reliving the iconic mo- moments from the show. So it's nothing new. You're just reliving these iconic moments, which is wonderful. But with Hyrule Warriors, you're getting new, new lore, new new moments, you know what I mean? And I think that's really exciting for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, all right, here's the next topic. I, this one I'm going to talk a little bit more about just because it's something that I was really looking forward to and then I actually didn't buy it yet for several reasons. Um which is uh, Medal of Honor Above and Beyond, which is Respawn's mm. first VR you, you title. To, didn't you get to try it I out? I demoed at, it at uh, yeah. Oculus Connect uh, yeah. a year and a few months ago. I played it. It seemed like a lot of fun, a lot of good potential. Now, I have not bought this game yet uh, for several reasons. One, it not their fault, but maybe they could have been a little more, uh, I guess, adaptive or whatever is that, you know, Cyberpunk 2077 basically came out the day before. And now originally Cyberpunk 2077 was supposed to be released last month, so I can't totally fault um, them for that. However, just as it launched, there was just no hype, no marketing, no nothing. I literally didn't even know it launched. (laughs) I thought you were going to tell me that it's coming out soon. No, no, no. It it launched. (laughs) Okay. And then the reviews have been kind of mixed um, where they're like, yeah, it's good in some parts and other parts, not so much. Um, It is also a $60 game. Now, $60 in VR is like, like Half-Life Alex. I happily paid the $60 and it was worth every penny, you know, but I mean, that is a triple A. Like I told you, I think it's like a masterpiece. I think it's my, favorite game of the year um medal of honor you know 
well, I'm sure has some great moments in it. And it's, I don't know how long it is, but, but is that, but, but do you need the link cable for that? Yes. If you were going to be it's, on the it's not a quest. It's not a quest. Okay, so, it's a so rift it is, or steam. It is triple A then. So they are going for that big. Yes. Budget. They're going for the triple A. Okay. So, I mean, and seeing, looking at the graphics and whatnot, they don't look, I mean, they look okay. They, they don't look quite the level of, you know, Half-Life Alex looks amazing, especially for a yeah. VR title. Um, it's it's not that level, you know. I don't know how long it is. Maybe it is around the same length. Who knows? But I from the reviews and you know, Mark played it as well. He was saying that there's just, you know there's some great moments in it, but then some parts are, are are a little lackluster, you know. And there's just certain um, gameplay things that just aren't quite as smooth as you'd like them. Anyway, so you know, it just kind of came and went and, and and people were you know complaining one about the game complaining about the the launch and how no one was really talking about it um th- there isn't uh currently there aren't any detailed graphic settings in uh locomotion options so these are things that they want to put into the game uh the, there's just some bugs and patches that the, the the fixes and improvements that they need to work on um yeah, it just it, it wasn't what I was expecting, and I don't think it was what a lot of people were expecting, you know, because this to me was mm. my second most anticipated VR title of the year. Um, and right now, people just aren't having that good of things to say about it. So I'm going to kind of hold off. Maybe if the price is a little lower and, and people say these I mean, patches or fixes actually help, and maybe I'll get it early next year. Do you think uh, Population One stole some of the thunder? I would say so. I mean, I bought Population One. And that, that does that's look a, really good. It's a thirty dollars game. Look, the graphics aren't the best, but the gameplay is super fun. It's 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 addictive. It's, it's, it, it looks yeah, addictive. Yeah. yeah, it's very addictive. It's a you know, Apex Legend slash Fortnite in VR. You know, and that that was a that was kind of like a surprise uh, thing for me. If you didn't mention Medal of Honor, I would have completely forgotten about that game, mm-hmm. the VR game. I would have completely forgotten about that until you mentioned it again. Whereas Population One still fresh on my mind, not just and a lot of good new- buzz too. I mean, that's the yeah. thing. Word of mouth nowadays with social media, it's it's important. Look at Among Us. Literally, yeah. look at Among Us. Like that game blew up because of word of mouth. Like yeah. it's a cultural phenomenon. I was at a family gathering the previous weekend, and I saw like my niece and nephew playing Among Us. I was like, "Hey, can I play with?" And they looked at me. They're like, "You know what Among Us is?" <laughs> I was like. I was like, not only did that make me feel old, but I was like, everyone knows what Among Us yeah. is. Like, yeah. even Grandpa knows what Among Us is. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so, I think that was the so last. So disappointing. Uh, I will probably wait till they fix up some things and maybe do a lower price. I just can't justify a full price sixty. Like, how, how do like you feel half, about forty? How do you feel about forty? Forty is good. Thirty, I'll buy. If it's mm. thirty right now, I'd probably buy it. You know, but yeah. sixty based is just, off, based off of your experience and. Um, the experiences you guys had at Facebook Connect, I yeah. wouldn't spend more than forty bucks on it. You yeah, know, thirty is a just... definite. I would buy it right now. Forty is a maybe, uh, but fifty, mm. sixty at this point, especially with all the stuff I I'm playing right now, I can wait. I can wait. Anyway, so I just don't think they did. You know, and I, I really like Respawn. I think they did a great job with, you know, I mean, they, you know, did Apex so Legends, they, do, they um, did Titanfall, they did uh, Jedi Fallen Order, you know, they, exactly, they've been yeah. on a big role. So I was, uh, and, and from the demo I played, it was a lot of fun. I was expecting good things, you know, and then the, also a problem too, Half-Life Alex raised that bar, man, for VR. They, they, and, and I mentioned this, AAA games, yeah. I mentioned this in probably previous podcasts. It's all. It's almost like a dis- disservice to VR because your expectations now the bar has been raised so much for premium VR that it's not a lot of companies and studios can achieve that bar or even come close. Yeah. So it's like maybe like two years ago, if Medal of Honor had come out, people would be like, "Oh my god," you know. But now it's like we're getting or even to the point- like last year. You yeah. Know what I mean? Well, because because here's the thing: it definitely like there's no way that if after Half-Life Alex, like you said, they'd raised the bar. There's no way they could have gotten anywhere close to that in terms of the, the way the game looks or feels. Yeah. But if they did, if they released the game before Population 1, I think mm. they could have honed in on the multiplayer hype. But because there's no multiplayer <laughs> yeah. hype, like yeah. it's 
it's just it fell off like you said it fell off once again because there are so many other amazing multiplayer vr games to be playing right now yeah. you know and how i want them to do well i want vr to do well yeah. i think vr is is i don't think it's going to replace console gaming but i i think it's going to be its own big it's going to oh, for sure fill this i mean this category of PSVR gaming too, eventually gaming and experience you know together and and so i feel like that's the next step and i want i want games like people who are putting the amount of resources into it like they did i want them to be rewarded especially if they do a good job and so I was, i'm disappointed to hear that i i will eventually play it um yeah all right uh, a couple small oh, items oh, here no, not, not, not to mention by the way ease of access the reason why i think vr is the way of the future especially with the oculus quest i can give that to my 80 year old dad and he can understand it after, yeah. I mean, after at least like a good 20 minutes, but he can, he can physically, like I give my dad a controller and he yeah, struggles. They don't, they, don't, they don't want to press any fucking buttons. It, it's not even that it's like, he struggles to move one without and not the yes. other. So he can walk, but he can't look. Whereas in VR, you just turn your head. So yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot more accessible for people. So I think that's why VR really is the future for like the, um, not for like the gaming the pro gamer market, but like for the family gamer market. Like yeah, like and also experiences, yeah. experiences like, like tourism as well. You know, yeah. I mean, the graphics aren't quite there yet, but I've already you know played. There's an app called Wander where they take Google Maps and they kind of lay it out, and it's not as high res as you'd like to be. One, it's, so it's not video though. either. Yeah, but you get that like, experience of being at a place, right? But if imagine if you were able to do that in a, a much higher resolution and a much more fluid uh, way, it'd be crazy. Like it's like, oh, I want to go visit the Eiffel Tower or the visit the pyramids in Egypt, you know? Exactly. Yeah, the Great you Wall. Do it's, that. It's it's so good, man. Especially yeah. for people who are like old or even crippled or like you know what I mean. Like, there's many reasons why it'd be good. Yeah. But so, um, anyways. Uh, Netflix, uh, Sonic animated series for 2022. So apparently Netflix accidentally, uh, tweeted out that, you know, and they had this, uh, uh, silhouette of a red Sonic and the Netflix symbol. So it's a 3d animated series, not a live action, uh, like the movie that just came out that surprisingly I enjoyed. Oh. I, uh, had like so many reasons to dislike it and I ended up enjoying oh, it, but anyways, I, it was, it was, it was, it was, I don't know. I don't think wholesome is the right word, but it was, I enjoyed it. Was it was fun. family. It was fun. fun. It was a good family movie. Yeah. I'm yeah. looking forward to the sequel. Yeah, me too. Uh, so apparently they were going to drop a trailer at the game awards, but because it got leaked early on Twitter, they decided to drop the yeah. announcement at the game awards. Yeah. So they're doing a 3d anime series for 2022. So I thought that was kind of cool uh, to hear about that. And, you know, we already have that sequel for the live action one come in oh it's uh, uh from tv media company wild brain yeah. and man of action entertainment the guys who made ben 10 and big hero 6 yeah, yeah. wild brain did teletubbies in carmen san diego oh, yeah. um another thing is uh another piece of news x cloud is coming to ios and pc in spring of 2021 so this mm. is really microsoft's real plan right this is that's why they don't care so much as they want exclusives for game pass they want exclusives so they can sell x cloud streaming services you know what i mean this is this is their real goal right like i mentioned many times before if they could put game pass on um, ps4 they would uh they don't care if you play their exclusive games as long as you're playing it through their through their their system you know exactly not yeah. system through their streaming service uh to be frank uh they don't really care if it's on an actual xbox um yeah and I'm I'm all for it. At first, I was a little against it, but now, now I'm a believer, man. Just after having used it, I'm I'm a full on believer. And I think I mentioned to you earlier. As soon as this happens, I'm upgrading to Ultimate because I'm currently just on Game Pass for PC. Yeah. Because yeah. having having Game Pass Ultimate is a waste unless you have an Xbox. Yeah. Um, in my opinion, so I just have Xbox Game Pass for PC. It doesn't include EA Play. I would still have to get ultimate if I want EA play included, but EA play mainly has sports games and a few games here or there. Yeah, yeah. Like I'd may maybe want to get back into Anthem at some point, but, um, if, but if once this comes out, I'm 100% going to Xbox ultimate so that I can get the X cloud. Mm -hmm. I can stream the games on my phone as well as, um, using EA play as well. Then it's, it's a huge bonus. It's just a win, you know, like for any, any gamer, it's just a win dude. Yeah. So I think that's all the news that I have. Do you have anything, uh, up there? Uh, yeah, a couple, couple super small yeah. things. Um, 
Uh, first of all, uh, the guy who made Dead Space, Dead Space's creator, which mm -hmm. I actually watched this wonderful like 30, 40 minute documentary on him creating the original Dead Space and how to like, how they spent six months on like a six second animation jump scare just to make sure it's perfectly, like just to make sure it'll perfectly shit your pants, you know? Mm -hmm. So they're coming out with a new game. And there's a lot of hype around it. It's called Callisto. Mm -hmm. um, it looks fantastic. Like it's, I knew it was like, I know it's going to be scary because I've, seen so many interviews with this guy his brain is if he wasn't uh making horror games for video games he would make he would be making horror films he just has a way of thinking he's not thinking about how do i make a good game he's literally thinking every single step how do i scare the shit out of you that's all he's thinking like he's not even thinking hey i hope this guy has a good time no i just want to make sure he's scared he's scared that's it a lot of hype around it the trailer looks sick not it's like it looks super triple a not what i was expecting at all I was expecting it to look worse, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like, because with the with horror games, they don't exactly have to be the best graphic wise. Look at Phasmophobia, you know, as long mm -hmm. as it scares you. Um, so yeah, I think that's worth mentioning and we should keep an eye on it. It's set, oddly enough, it's set in the same universe as PUBG, uh, mm -hmm. which is very interesting um, having this like horror. I believe that you, I believe you are also based, on, are you based on a space station for this? Uh, something like it. it's a sci-fi horror so um similar to dead space set in the PUBG universe we are definitely going to be seeing a lot more of this in the future and we're gonna we're gonna keep an eye on it because currently all you need to know is there's a trailer check it out and i have high hopes high 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 hopes for this like truly truly think that the guy's gonna uh, knock it out of the park with that um but yeah it's it's they're aiming to be the scariest next gen horror game um jj abrams bad robot forms a game studio with left 4 dead 4 creator uh, worth mentioning there um oh and then hold on this was interesting we're not going to talk about it because technically we already did in the beginning which is that ea bought was it code code masters ea is yeah. going to buy code masters for 1.2 billion dollars and they're going to do exactly what i said they're going to do they're going to give them tighter deadlines mm. ask for a better turnaround and screw them over that's exactly what's going to happen um and then let's see here um yeah, I don't know if this is big news or not, but Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo are actually partnering together to try to make gaming safer. And I think this has to do with like, just making sure that they're tackling like the toxicity in the gaming communities and things like mm -hmm. that. And it's interesting to see them all working together for that, which I think is quite cool. Um, that's not important, that's not important. There was one last little bit. Oh yeah, this is just for fun. Uh, if you've played Cyberpunk or if you've seen any footage, uh, Johnny Silverhand, Keanu Reeves, his bionic arm is now something that you can actually get if you don't have an arm. You can actually have a real, uh, have it as a real prosthetic, which I think is awesome. Um, and then I, there was one other thing I wanted to mention, but I think it's so not even worth mentioning. Yeah, yeah, no. Oh, yeah. Uh, Just Cause Mobile. What the hell? Not, not looking forward to that, but yeah, that happened. Apparently they announced Just Cause Mobile. That's 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 all I got for you there, Dennis. Yeah. Um, I, I saw this one real quick uh, for people wanting to get some cheap or not cheap, but discounted PS4 games. There are discounts at Amazon right now. They're pretty low. They have Last of Us Part Two for thirty bucks, Ghost of Tsushima for forty bucks, uh, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War for fifty, God of War ten bucks, Last of Us Remastered ten bucks, Spider Man Game of the Year Edition twenty bucks. These are kind of similar to their uh, Prime Day and Black Friday sales. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, 50 bucks. Horizon Zero Dawn, 10 bucks. Uh, Marvel's Iron Man VR, 20 bucks. Watch Dogs Legions, 40 bucks. Oh, this game I've heard a lot of good reviews about, which is Immortals Phoenix Rising. Uh, hmm. They have that I've for heard, 40 bucks. I've heard bucks. good news about the, 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 the combat. I've heard good news about that. Yeah, 40 bucks. Um, uh, Squadrons, then, well, well, 25 while we're on discounts, let me just add this. The and uh, this is more useful to you and I. But Epic Games is going to be giving out fifteen free games over this holiday, Jeez. starting starting on December seventeenth and running until sometime 20, 2021, I guess. Is it, as I think it might be, is it going to be each week, uh, free game every day. Oh, so literally every day there's going to be a free game starting December seventeenth. So if you miss it, like if you if you miss that by a day, then you you've missed the game. So make sure starting December seventeenth, which is in what two days from now, check the Epic Game Store every day. There's going to be a free game for you, for at least the next fifteen days, nice. uh, which is amazing. That's yeah, huge. Currently, 
Pillars of Eternity is free as well as Tyranny. Um, mm. I haven't played either of those, so I can't comment on them. But yeah, 15 free games on Epic Games Store if you have it. Too much good stuff. Too much oh, good yeah. stuff. Cheap stuff too. Um, what have you been pl- What have you been playing, Dennis? It's just Cyberpunk 2077 and then Hell Spider yeah. Man. Spider Man. Nice. Uh, I didn't get that far into either. Uh, a few hours into Spider Man, a few hours into Cyberpunk 2077. Um, uh, what else? You know, some Population One. I'm trying to think of what else uh, I've been playing. Yeah, I think I think that's about it. So nice. Um, and then we're gonna announce something soon for uh, if people don't know that our company's working on a VR game uh if you guys don't know we did the twin picks vr experience last year but we were working on a, a game that's probably gonna be released sometime in the next few months are you, so are you probably allowed have, to give us are you allowed to give us a little spoiler and tell us the genre uh yeah it's a sports game it's a sports game so, oh wow i was not expecting that that's awesome yeah, yeah it's different so all right uh i think that's it josh uh where can people find you uh you guys can find me right here on the collider games podcast as well as on the discord i am I'm literally on Discord 24-7. If you guys have got any questions, feel free to shoot me a, a DM on Discord. And then, yeah, I'm, I actually just set up a bunch of new socials um, and I'll be posting them onto that Discord soon. Cool. Uh, as, and then you guys will have it as well. And then currently, obviously, I'm playing Cyberpunk 2077. I'm going to ch- literally jump into it as soon as it's done. Right after this. And I've, yeah, I've also been playing a lot of uh, Dragon, uh, was it Dragon Quest 11, uh, oh. 11S. Because uh, I did, I, I huge fan of Dragon Quest, um, the originals. But with 11s, they brought back a feature where you can play the whole of Dragon Age 11, but as like a 16-bit old school game instead of in 3D. So I can play it the way like they used to make it, which is really sick. So I've been playing it like that as well. But mainly Cyberpunk 2077, a lot of Valorant because I'm I'm actually tr- I'm taking that stuff really seriously. I'm trying to enter into the local leagues here. Nice. Um, yeah, I try to um, try to get better at that game. And then yeah, that's about it. Oh, and uh, I've been using TikTok, Dennis, to try to <laughs> to try to build an audience because it's actually a pretty damn good way to build an audience. I've Is already it? started I, getting. I don't know yeah. much about it. I it's TikTok. Does TikTok disappear? Because the whole thing about I never got into Snapchat because I didn't like the idea of making videos and then having no, them they're, disappear. They're, they're there TikTok forever. Stay? Like, okay, it's that a, might interest the, me a lot more. And than... and they've now officially started. Uh, you can now do three minute long ones. I believe before the time it was like a minute and a half, mm-hmm. but now they've extended it to three minutes. So I've been doing like sketch comedy on TikTok. Once I'm confident in the sketch comedy I'm doing on TikTok, I'll link it on this channel. And dude, it just actually really is a good way of building like your own small following. So I've got that on TikTok. I've linked my Twitch account where I said as soon as I get to a hundred. Uh, not subscribers, but followers. As soon as I get to 100 followers on Twitch, I'll start streaming daily. Nice. So I've been like stealing my followers from TikTok, trying to get them over to Twitch. Uh, and, and it's been working slowly, but it has. So yeah, cool. maybe, maybe one right. day you guys will see me go viral. <laughs> nice. Uh, you guys can find me on Twitter at ThinkHero, Instagram, Dennis.TZNG. I don't know if I'll ever have a TikTok one, but if I do, I will, I will mention it here. <laughs> uh, but anyways... Uh, subscribe to this channel, youtube.com slash Collider Games. Uh, and also, uh, you know, keep up with all our stuff. Like I said, we're, we're still kind of reorganizing some stuff. So there'll be some announcements, including the VR game we're working on, plus some other stuff. Do you, so, th- do you think we'll have another podcast next week? Or do you think this is going to be more we'll like try. a bi-weekly uh, kind of thing? We'll try. We'll try. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's just, yeah. Depends on the news, I guess, as well. Yeah, exactly. All right. uh, Until next time, see you guys later. See you.